There are many different architectural patterns that we can follow in building software applications, but in particular, one of my favorites is the plugin style architecture. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to walk you through building a plugin style architecture in ASP.NET Core. It's building on some previous videos I have, which I will link in this one as well. So you can click above here and then go check that out if you haven't seen it already. But it's going to be looking at leveraging Autofac to do dependency injection with a little bit of reflection and assembly scanning to pull it all together. So if that sounds a little bit mysterious, you're going to want to check those videos out first then come right back here and continue on. A quick reminder that if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel and check that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio and continue on where the previous videos left off. So a little primer on what the previous video showed was I have this solution file that has a couple of different projects in it. I've gone ahead and I've added a couple more, which I'll explain in just a moment, but I was really comparing three different ways that we can leverage Autofac and try to get a plugin system pulled together for dependency injection. So the very entry, <clears throat> scrap that, sorry. So the entry point to our program is just a single line. And then I continued on from there to basically explain how we have this skeleton program that really just focuses on being able to scan assemblies, get type information, and then set up some plugins that do all the rest of the work for us. So this core application that we have, and in this case, if we go to the solution explorer on the left, it's just called full resolve web API. And this is because it was the variation that could do full resolution of all of the types that I was interested in. So these other two, that's a problematic minimal API and service provider web API, these are the two other variants that we're not going to look at because this third one pulls them all together. If you've gone ahead and watched the previous video, we got to a point where if you check out this plugins folder here, I have a couple of plugins. I've gone ahead and added one more, and I've also reduced the one plugin that had a like a hello route on it. Um, this was had a couple of other dependencies just to kind of illustrate how we can pull some extra stuff in from the container builder. We don't really need them because the previous video showed that we can go access them. I don't need them for a simple hello route, so not a big deal. Right now, if we look at our application, we have two plugins that I have inside of the same project, which is a little weird. I'm gonna to touch on this in just a moment. If I check out the container builder as well, one thing that I've changed from the original project is that instead of having this code here, which just looked at the current executing assembly, which would work totally fine when our plugins are in the same assembly, I've gone ahead and I've added this assembly scanning. So if we read through this code that's on line 17 through 21, what I'm doing is checking in the running directory, and this is just a naive approach for doing this. We can just go check for any DLL file, right? And then from there, I'm gonna load in those assemblies and then put them in an array and then tell Autofac to go register all of the modules from those assemblies. Now, in your particular case, you might wanna have more specific filtering. Maybe your plugins are in a dedicated folder. However, you wanna go structure that type of thing. But this is how I'm doing assembly scanning for this example. And really what I'm trying to call out here is that instead of looking at just one assembly, the current one, we're now able to go load dependencies from other assemblies as well. That is going to include the current running program. Okay, so the current status of the program is that we can go check other assemblies, but we still have our plugins located inside of this current assembly. So if we were to go run this right now, if I press the play button, what we should get is a web application that starts up, of course, on a different screen. So let me go ahead and pull this over. Boom, right? We can see that it went to the hello route. And if I test out goodbye, we also get the goodbye route. So that works totally fine. Nothing too fancy there, but just to explain how that's working, is that I have these two modules which are an Autofac concept, and then I am asking in that module for the web application and then just using a minimal API. If I look at the Hello plugin, it's the exact same, except the route is a little bit different, but very simple, right? These two, I'm gonna use air quotes here because they're plugins, but they're still within the core application. When we talk about plugin architectures, you can technically do this, right? It's not wrong. And in your really trivial cases, right? If you start pulling stuff out into other projects, that's more of a plugin approach. But the more that you start to do that, this is where the complexity is going to keep adding up more and more and more. 
So if you just wanted to start isolating things and you don't really have a need to pull them into other assemblies, this could be a great approach just to kind of get like a, what you might call like a vertical slice, right? You can go put your functionality into a module. Maybe you want to build out a folder structure and some namespaces in your project. And you can treat each of those kind of like its own, you know, its own vertical slice or own module or plugin, right? So you could go do that. But if you want to start being able to say grow your team and you want to grow the, the software that you're building across multiple teams, uh, multiple developers contributing into this, when you have plugins, this does afford you the opportunity to start having more isolated contributions, which can be really nice. There are situations, of course, where you want to open up third party plugin support. As I walk through this particular example, the plugins that we're talking about here are going to be more focused on your internal developers. Even for myself, when I'm building my own projects, I like leveraging plugins because they force some isolation. And for me, that's really nice because then I don't have things bleeding across different boundaries where it might not make sense. If I find that I'm starting to do that, right, it makes me question, hey, did I set these things up properly? Maybe I came up with a, a, an odd plugin boundary that doesn't really make sense. And it's a good sign for me, like maybe I need to rethink about this design. So it's a bit of a forcing function for me personal preference when I'm building things, but this can be really nice as your team starts to grow and you have some complexity that could be introduced into your application. And now just a quick word from this video sponsor, which is Pact Publishing. Pact has lots of awesome C-sharp and .NET development books. And in particular, I wanted to talk about this one called Apps and Services with .NET 8. I have a copy of the book right here. It's by Mark Price. It's an awesome read. You can learn about Blazor, Maui, gRPC, GraphQL, and many other things as well. So I highly recommend giving it a check. You can check it out in the links below in the description and the comments. Thanks, and now back to the video. So we're gonna switch gears here a little bit. And I was mentioning that when we have these plugins, you know, these modules inside of our main application, this could be just good enough for you as a solo dev or a small team where you don't really need the overhead of pulling things out into different assemblies. That's totally fine. But if you're trying to go a more like true plugin based approach, technically these things would exist in different assemblies. And this is where we can start to really add a lot of complexity. So I want to walk through a couple of scenarios. One I'll kind of explain high level and the other one we're actually going to do in the code and try exercising this. So the idea is that when we have the modules as plugins inside of our code right now in the main project, What's happening is that code is compiled into our, our DLL, in this case, our assembly. That compiled code is just part of it, right? It's in the main assembly. Generally with plugins, the idea is that you can dynamically load these things at runtime. That's a side effect. You might want this in some cases where you have some application where you can literally as the program's running, uh, you can sort of uh, do a refresh. You can rescan for plugins and, and load in new functionality at runtime, which is super cool. But a lot of the time, especially for ASP.NET Core stuff, I find we don't really need this concept of like hot reloading, right? So having this dynamic plugin loading ability is truly, it, it is a little bit of overhead, but what we could think about is consider if you're building software and you have a large team or you have multiple teams that are contributing functionality to the software. In a situation like that, what happens is the more people you have contributing to a single code base can get pretty complicated pretty fast. Something that you could consider is that if you have these teams working in these different functional areas of your product, so say it is an ASP.NET web service in this case, if you broke things out into plugins, they could be contributing to those areas specifically, right? They could own a full vertical if that's how your plugins are structured, or they could be dabbling in just, you know, one plugin in general. But the idea is that your build system could start taking on some of this complexity. And here's what I mean by that. Right now, because these two modules, if we look in our solution explorer, because those are in the main project, when we build in Visual Studio, like I said, that code's going right into the assembly. As soon as we start pulling this stuff out, how do we make sure that when we wanna go run this thing, we're gonna have the code in the bin folder? This is where if you if you have a build system, right, you might be able to have different build jobs running, building different plugins. They might not even all exist in the same solution, right? You can totally start pulling all of these pieces apart 
You could use different repositories. You can kind of do anything you want, but then your build system is going to have some type of thing where it needs to be able to grab the plugin data and put it with the core application. So you need to build some of that complexity somewhere else. Now that might mean, for example, your plugins are building. You can do this in so many ways, but you're gonna have a build job for each plugin. It's gonna put that into a shared folder somewhere, whatever that looks like. And then the main build for your core application will go fetch the stuff from that directory and say, hey, all the plugins are here. Let me grab them when I go build. You could do it with NuGet packages. So your plugins will publish to a NuGet feed. And then when your main application builds, it pulls those NuGets down, right? You could do it in many ways, but like you can see that anything I just described there is far more complicated than just leaving the stuff <laughs> directly in the, the main application. I like highlighting this because it's critical to understand that I think plugins can offer a lot of flexibility, but truly, if you're not used to using them and you just jump right to, you know, having all these different projects, like you, the complication and complexity just goes through the roof. So that's what I think is, I don't want to say the ideal way, but probably the most realistic way if you have many teams or you're kind of doing things at scale. I think that there is a shortcut and I use this shortcut all the time. For reference, I worked on just giving you one example. I worked with on a team of uh, roughly three or four people because it was different people at different times. And we had a solution with over 200 projects in it. It's a lot of projects, but a lot of that is because there's plugins and stuff that dynamically get added in. Because we were just one team working in one spot, it was so much overhead to go, if we had to go make different build jobs for all that stuff. So the cheat, is being able to have Visual Studio do that for us. So we're gonna walk through that as an example because I think that that can offer a lot of value if you wanna get plugin benefits, structure your code some way, and not add so much complexity. So let's see it. I'm gonna go ahead and take the plugins that we have. You'll notice in the solution explorer on the left-hand side, I have a plugin one and plugin two project. They're currently empty. So I'm gonna take the hello plugin module. I'm gonna put it into plugin one. I'm gonna take the goodbye one and put it into plugin two. And then I'm gonna delete this plugins folder right out of Visual Studio. It's gone now. And you can see that I have plugin one and plugin two here. Now, what I'm going to do is run this and we'll see that when we go to run this web application now, going to the hello route doesn't work, right? And the same idea if I go to goodbye also does not work. And it doesn't work because Visual Studio doesn't know that we care about these plugins. I literally, from the perspective of this project, full resolve web API, I just deleted that code. It doesn't exist, right? It moved. But this project doesn't know or care about plugin one and plugin two. But if we go look, this is, it's the same code. I just moved it, right? This is how you would go create those plugins. And this even applies to the other example I gave earlier. So if you wanted to go have a build system, go build these separately and all that, you could do this you'd have the same thing. You need to move the code out of your main project, right? How do we get the shortcut here? What's something that I've used and had a lot of success with? And the reality is it's just a bit of a cheat because you're breaking a rule, but Visual Studio is so good at doing this for us. I'm gonna show you it manually. And what I mean by that is if I open up this in the folder explorer here, so really what we need to have is our plugin one and plugin two inside of this bin directory. That's the goal we need to have, right? So if I go back up a little bit, let's see, go up another folder. So plugin one and plugin two. Right now, I need those DLLs. And how do I get them, right? If I go build and I build this one too. So both of those are built now. So I go into bin directory. I take plugin one, <laughs> right? It's it seems kind of silly and like you can see me, I'm doing this manually, which is why it seems so silly. So I'm gonna go into here, drop it in. If I go back, I go to plugin two now. I'm just copying and pasting the stuff, right? Almost there. I'm trying to talk and show you at the same time that if I just go press play now, I didn't touch any code, right? Like the hello route works. The goodbye route, it works. I didn't have to change any code and we were basically able to add this functionality back in just by having the DLLs present. That's essentially what your build system would have to do in different ways, whether it's NuGet packages or whatever else. So you would need that kind of functionality, but we can make it easy for us 
and this is the shortcut. I'm going to delete these again so you know that <laughs> I'm not cheating with the shortcut I'm about to show you. But if I go now and on the full Resolve Web API, point that I want to get across here is that Visual Studio makes this so easy for us if we just add them as dependencies. It completely defeats the idea of not being able to see this plugin code while it's uh, you know, while you're in development, because you want to keep it isolated. If you're finding like I need to from my main application directly call into this plugin code, that plugin code probably shouldn't be where it is. If that's what I was giving you earlier when I said an example of like these boundaries, this would be a case where I would say to myself, hey, if I need to directly call this plugin code, probably a smell in how I've designed things. By having them added as dependencies, technically, it makes it a little bit dicey because someone could now go directly access some of this stuff. There's one thing protecting us though. If I go look at the modules themselves, this internal keyword is really what's keeping us protected here. If I go into program now, right, of my application, technically I can't do hello plugin module, can't be seen in Visual Studio Right? It, it's unable to go resolve it, and it can't because it's internal, even though I have a dependency on that plugin. So that's a bit of protection. However, if some people were you know, not using internal and they are using public, uh, public instead, now if I go here, Visual Studio can find it. This is the thing that we don't want to have happen. One more nice guardrail is that the more of a skeleton application your core app is, the less likely it is that you're going to find yourself trying to do this kind of thing. Because you should be ideally, you know, in a perfect world, able to add your functionality in through plugins. You shouldn't have to come into the core app to do this. But I did want to highlight that this shortcut basically allows you to break some rules if you're not paying attention. This is why it's it's worked for me up to this point, because like I'm making the rules <laughs> and I'm aware of what's going on. and I'm just using this as a shortcut because I didn't want to spend the time making more complex build systems. I still have not done any magic for copying files, but if I just go build this now, that's all that I do is just build it. You can see plugin one and plugin two are directly in the bin folder. Not only that, we get the PDBs automatically for debugging. Like it just works. It's super nice to have, and it avoids you going, especially when you're debugging in your Visual Studio and uh, your dev environment, it avoids this issue of like, oh crap, did I forget to rebuild? Oh crap, I rebuilt it, but I, did I forget to copy it? It just happens. And it's so nice because now we can just go run things. And again, like because those files are copied there, it just works right away. That's a bit of a cheat code I like to use. But again, if I were growing teams or growing this product surface area, eventually I would like to get to the point where I'm saying, hey, you know what? This might not be a scalable thing. We want to have people, we might want to pull plugins from different repositories and all this other kind of stuff. We probably want, I would probably opt for something like NuGet packages to be able to pull that stuff down. So you'd have some type of manifest you could define. And that way you have a central manifest that you can say, hey, these are the plugins that my application cares about. Pull them in dynamically during the build and you're good to go. I think the cheat code's just helpful when you're trying to get up and running or you're a very small dev shop like I'm doing in my own case. That is my approach for building plugin systems in ASP.NET Core. I hope you found that helpful and I do want to be able to show you how this can work in a Blazor application. So if you're interested in that when that video is ready, you can check it out here. Thanks and I'll see you next time.